ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਸੰਗਤ ਟੈਲੀਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਤੇ ਇਸ ਖਾਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਨਿਗਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਮੈਂ ਕਮਲਪ੍ਰੀਤ ਕੌਰ ਲੰਡਨ ਸਟੂਡੀਓ ਤੋਂ ਹਾਜ਼ਰ ਹਾਂ ਅੱਜ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਖਾਸ ਮਹਿਮਾਨ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਜੋ ਅੱਜ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਵਿੱਚ ਜੁੜਨਗੇ ਇਟਸ ਅ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਵਿਦ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲ ਪਰਸਨ ਹੂ ਇਸ ਟ੍ਰਾਈਂਗ ਟੂ ਮੇਕ ਅ ਮਾਰਕ ਇਨ ਟਰਮਸ ਆਫ ਦ ਇਨ ਫੀਲਡ ਆਫ ਆਰਟ ਐਂਡ ਹੂ ਇਸ ਆਲਸੋ ਮੇਕਿੰਗ ਅ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਐਫਰਟ ਇਨ ਟਰਮਸ ਆਫ ਰੈਪਲੀਕੇਟਿੰਗ ਸਿਕ ਹਿਸਟੋਰੀਕਲ ਪਿਕਚਰਸ ਇਨ ਹਿਸ ਓਨ ਵੇ ਆਫ ਐਕਸਪ੍ਰੈਸ਼ਨ ਐਂਡ ਟੂਡੇ I'm going to present to you a person who is special in more than one ways. He's an artist, but he's an artist with a difference. Let's welcome Mr. Rod Singh Tassel. Uh, very warm welcome. Why get you to Kalsa? Why get you to Kifate? A warm welcome to Sangha Television. You're also known as Pentacular Artists. Yeah. Why and how did you get this? Well, my full name is actually Rajinder Prasad Singh Tell. Mm. It's a long name, but I did shorten it down to Raj Singh Tell. Pentacular art has come because I used to love pens when I was younger. Okay. Uh, and I didn't draw for 12 years, so when I started drawing, I was very unconfident and um, I was rusty, so I thought, give myself a name that means something, and then when you've got that name, it's almost like a superhero, you have to live up to it. Yeah. So the Pentacular, if you call yourself Pentacular, you better be good. Yeah. So, so something from so spectacular <coughs> and because you work with <coughs> pens it become yeah. it became pentacular. And then I went over to actually going to pencils. So pencils and pens still the PE and yes. so originally it was pens actually and I still love using them. Hmm. Well, when did you decide that you know was it very early in your life you you chose this way of expression or how did art come to play such a major role in your life? Well, I've always drawn since I was little. I, I actually, I don't remember a time when I didn't draw. Mm. And I was a typical one of those children that would draw 24-7. Mm. I'd be drawing in school, in all lessons. And so it got to the point that, um, you know, I got to a very advanced stage at a very young age. Okay. And so I used to always be the best in my school, best in my class. And um, yeah, I, di- I didn't do much C-car, I have to admit. I had a superhero called Rajman. And actually that was published in the East Line newspapers when I was 15 so a lot of people don't know that uh, it was there was a first ever seek super and it was published mm. for six months but it didn't last too long and after that I then uh, went back to uni got a degree and then I kind of lost uh, interest in art mm. for approximately I'd say 12 years from 2000 to 2012 so imagine you were constantly drawing yeah. something and then there was a lapse of not drawing yeah but when you what are your early memories of mm. uh, besides as you said there's a superhero that yeah. you've drawn what what were your early memories like what would you want to always draw was it more like nature or more like people more portraits or more i didn't really ever do toys or something what, it was what? it was always like comics okay and very cartoony kind of uh, artwork and still life anything i could kind of practice mm. and um it just kind of uh, i don't know why but i just got bored of certain things and i started new things so it's kind of a mixture i don't know what was never really stuck to one thing but one thing i never did was see car work mm. which is quite strange looking back now i'm like well why didn't i do it because uh, now that i've started it's just such an incredible source of material when i introduced you i said you're special in my ways and yeah. one you're not just an artist yeah. but you also Do you want to share something about yourself? What makes you special? Yeah, I I don't know if it's special. Some people think it's special, but I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, hmm. which is a form of autism. Um I was only diagnosed 2 years ago and it kind of finally answered a lot of questions that I had. What were the questions you you, you just well, mentioned I've, I've as you up or I've always had problems um kind of interacting with the Sikh community especially. Okay. And I'm very reclusive. I would I, I can spend pretty much all my time by myself. I don't need Were you re- reclusive just to the community or just to everyone around you? Pretty it? much everybody, but I find it diff- more difficult within our community because there's a lot of expectations put upon you whereas in the wider world you don't care. Mm. Like I love my community, but I, I never felt like I was part of it. And it's only now that I've got older that I got diagnosed. I was like, "All oh, right, that makes sense now why I find it difficult to go to Gurdwara." interacting with people. I didn't never really picked up Punjabi, which mm. is another thing that I've realized 
uh, learning languages can be difficult, Asperger's syndrome. Hmm. Um, it's not a mental illness, a lot of people think uh, there's a confusion and there's a lot of taboo. It's a developmental disorder Yeah. and it affects how people communicate, uh, interact and how they perceive the world. So it's, it's a kind of a, almost like a sensory uh, developmental disorder. So people grow up in different uh, developmental stages. So yeah, it's quite a having, thing. Uh, you know, having discovered that you have this issue, yeah. as you said, it must have put a lot of things in place and perspective for you, yeah. as you said. Now you, now you can see why certain things happen the yeah. way they happen. But do you think it has come, uh, come at a point where probably you needed to find those answers or it was just a discovery or why, why did you leave it till so late? I didn't leave it till so late. I didn't even know what Asperger's syndrome was. Hmm. It's a very, what I call um, a new field in terms of even uh, kind of psychiatrists and stuff. Of course, it's been around for a long time, but people have only started to really understand what Asperger's syndrome is. Hmm. And my perception of people who are autistic was like Rain Man. Hmm. And what I didn't realize that there's a, there's a nervous, there's a spectrum disorder, meaning that there's people on there that are highly intelligent and there's people that can't speak. Mm. So mm. there's a wide variety and but the things that we all have in common is um, the, relating, the, to the relating to the world, world. obsessive mm. natures, mm. Uh, reclusiveness mm. and, and in the past I saw this all as negatives. Okay. Now I see it as a positive because because I, as an artist yeah. you probably need all of those things. You need your quality time with yourself, yeah. and you need that reflection to be able to draw something. Yeah, and, be I, and to because I'm, I yeah. always also pick out things that a lot of other artists haven't within a story. I also try and you know when I do a drawing, I do them very quickly, which is hard for people to understand. Four mm. to five mm. days, sixty hours, and if you can collect that per day. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have any social life and I don't really want it. Um, I've got a goal which is to capture our history in pencil and it's going to be a lifetime project. It's not something that's a year or two. Yeah. Every time I go to my next stage, I'll do bigger. So next year I'm going bigger. Yeah. And the next few years after, I'll go bigger. Initially, you said you had issues with a lot of, you know, the, the community had yeah. a lot of expectations and yeah. probably uh, when youngsters also feel that they're being judged in terms yeah. of how they look or what they eat, where they yeah. go and all that. But it's, I think it probably could be true of all the communities which yeah. are trying to connect to their faiths in an alien world. Yeah. In terms of you now, as you said, you, you're going to more focus on yeah. depicting our own history. Yeah. So do you think it's like kind of kind of coming a full circle where something you you never thought you yeah. would do, yeah. but now you're so inclined that you want to do depict the Antarctic history in paintings and art. Yeah, it's so weird because I, sometimes I think I'm in a dream world mm. because I was in such a difficult space two or three years ago, and I don't want to go too deep into it. But I wasn't diagnosed. I was finding work. I just lost my job, mm. and I think why would have done it for a reason. Uh, I had a comp and I had a tribunal case, and I won. So I had money and then I was just sitting, I was like, what can I do? I hadn't drawn for 12 years. Mm. All of a sudden I was like, all right, let's try again. And it just snowballed from there. And so I think, sometimes I think to myself, if I knew I drew for those years, but I think the journey had to happen this way for me to really embrace uh, my background, also to really push myself to the level I've done, because I don't think I would have done it if I hadn't got that kind of baggage in my head that I haven't drawn for 12 years. So whenever I think I haven't drawn for 12 years, I better do you a little... make it up? Yeah, I'm going to do a lot more drawing, so I'll do one a week just to make it up. So I think why have done it for a reason, and I don't look at it as a negative anymore. I think of it as, yeah, I wake up in the morning and think, wow, this is great. So in a way, through art, you've kind of found yourself once again, yeah. and you've kind of found peace within yourself once again, would you say that? Yeah, because the thing is, when you sit by yourself for a long time and don't want to go places, people find it strange, but when you say you're drawing, they're accepting of it. Yes. Oh, exactly. great, you, he's drawing. So, uh, it's so got... So then, they know that you're using your own time in a very yeah. positive, productive way. Yeah, so, uh, example is like relatives and stuff. I don't, re I don't really know too many of my own relatives. I'll be straight with you. I'm a very private person. And so now that they understand, this made things easier, and I've told them, look, don't take it personally. When I'm in a, when I'm in a, and I, it's true, when I've started a drawing, it's going to be finished unless the world's blowing up. Mm. That's mm. my thing. Or my mum tells me to stop. That's the only two things that are going to stop it. Mm. So I have got a very focused mind. I know, I mean, if you see how much I've done in eight months, 
uh, you'll be shocked about how much I've turned out. And if you look at my lifetime, I've got you know so many drawings I'm going to do or redo. So I know I'm going to really stamp a mark. Um, that's my aim. Like sob buzzing, I want to stamp a mark. Like on that. Cut. Yeah, I've got very high ambitions. Good. Uh, you mentioned Sobha Singh. Yeah. He was known for depicting Sikh gurus. Yeah. One of his very famous pictures is Guru Gobind Singh Ji's picture that he's yeah. drawn. Guru Nanak Dev Ji's picture that he's drawn. You almost see the copies of artwork almost everywhere you go yeah. in Sikh religious places and otherwise Sikh homes as well. Yeah. So taking an inspiration, do you think that was why the first thing you drew was a picture of Guru Gobind Singh Ji? Yeah, I did. I mean, I've always loved that picture. Um, I think sometimes something has been perfected and it's hard to perfect it hmm. and so I do sometimes feel to myself I want to redraw Guru Gobind Singh Ji in my own uh, version but whenever I sat down I started drawing or getting an interpretation Sobha Singh's version would always come in hmm. but I am planning to do a more what I call very realistic portrayal of Guru Gobind Singh it's almost like a photograph hmm. and that's going to be a project I'm going to do in the long term I don't want to I don't want to I want to establish myself first hmm. because I think once you've established yourself people are more accepting of uh, what taking you do. risks yeah yeah so obviously Guru Nanak Dev Ji once again the imagery of Guru Nanak Dev Ji has been instilled in people's uh, psyche for such a long time hmm. it's very difficult to break away from that but I'm going to try in the future the first picture that we mentioned of Guru yeah. Gobind Singh Ji uh, that that came, yeah. You know, this is a beautiful, beautiful picture. But as as you say, it it does look like you've kind of, you know, yeah. servicing this picture. Yeah. Then that that's the that's what the reflection is. Then then that's where you've picked it up from. When you pick up something from which is normally shown in color, and you do yeah. in just grayscale, black and white, basically, yeah. how difficult or how easy it is. You know, even we can still see the shining pearls and we mm. see the shining metal but it's not color but y you know the intensity and mm. the effect of being in black and white how do you see that i've always loved black and white photography black and white artwork and so it's not something that um I've, i find very difficult mm. i think because i like to look at things in black and white anyway so i, I it is difficult for people that are not used to drawing in black and white to understand the tonal differences, to make something look shiny, to make it look uh, like a And so I've got to the point now where it's not something I think about, I just do it. And so it's hard to really kind of put uh, an explanation to how I do it, it just happens. Okay, so uh, where people normally find, you know, when you imagine a painting, yeah. you imagine a lot of colors in it. Yeah. But for someone like you who's drawing in charcoal or pens or mm. pencils, just in, in you know, normally a black on a white yeah. and greys. Um, is it how you think you see life as well? It's mm. the shades of black and white and grey or that's do you very, see life as I've never, really, as I've never well? really thought about that actually because that's quite an interesting question. Because I always say to people I see the world in black and white and I don't mean literally but um, a lot of people know the autistic spectrum find it difficult to understand the, these grey shades. So examples is like, you know, when someone says something to you, uh, you may take it literally and literally be really offended. That person doesn't even know and they just walk off. Uh, but in reality, there's a grey scale. Mm. And people in, on autistic spectrum, it's one of the things I always say, I think in black and white, right and wrong. So maybe that is something as well that might be related to because it's easier for me to draw in black and white. I, find, I, I can draw in colour. Mm. I don't like saying it because people will get quite um, like, well, why don't you do it? Hmm. But I can actually draw just as good in colour. But, but this, find but this is this is what you're more comfortable with. This this you think is more of your tone, or this is more of your take on life yeah. or art. Well, I think with colour, you're so used to seeing things in colour, and it's been done. And I don't want to just rehash. Also, I find drawing in colour extremely boring. And the problem with that is, if you find something boring, you don't put your all into it. Mm. I love drawing in pencils. It's mm. something that I always say my fingers are like my pencils, mm. and I miss them when they're not on, in there. Mm. So even my fingers got a bump in it mm. because I use a pencil so much. Mm. Uh, yeah. So for the pencil, it's more of a kind of a, a connection. I haven't got that with any other medium for a long time, unfortunately. Mm. And another thing, when we're, when we're talking about uh, the pictures that you've drawn of. Uh, Sikh religious personalities. Yeah. One which stood out for, out for me personally was uh, Mata Gujariji with yeah. Chote Sahib Zadeh. Yeah. And if we can have a look at that picture. 
I see uh, uh, why I think it's special is because of the expressions that have been captured yeah. in it, but more so because of the f because of the background. You know, you see a barge and yeah. you see Baba Moti Ramera there, and then then you you look at the faces and the depths of the expression. Uh, when you, uh, as I said, you know, uh, how do you research? Let's say if you were going to do that background yeah. so do you look at all different pictures or you read history to come up with something like this yeah. with so much detail well the story starts with my mum okay Shikinder Ko and um, it starts with her because she's the one that tells me what to draw uh, I've said to her my other artwork is for me and my Sikh artwork is for you and the Sikh community so she tells me what to draw and so then she tells me the brief outline of the history okay. and what happened. And then what I would do, I will research the previous drawings hmm. and pictures and try to uh, get an understanding of the story and see what hasn't been depicted before. Hmm. Because there's no point me redoing drawings over and over again. And then once I've got an understanding... So do you think when, uh, say, initially you were not into Sikh history, yeah. so when, you're, when your mom tells you something yeah. and you, you know, you imagine a picture in yeah. a certain way yeah so uh, do you think uh, because now that you've grown up and it's easier yeah. you know for sometimes it's difficult for a child to comprehend yeah. something yeah but at a certain age you know you you can understand yeah and uh, then the process begins like a uh, story is narrated to you then you do some research what happens next i think it's easier now so in the past there was no such thing as the internet hmm. you have to understand i'm actually older than more people think so you know, when someone tells you a story, it could be in Punjabi, it could be this. So it's very hard to, when I was younger, to really get uh, caught up in it. Hmm. And so I was really focused on other things. So now, I mean, when I want to read something, and I like to read a lot about history and stuff, mm -hmm. I can really get so many variations on the story. It's okay. not just one source. Because I don't want to just read one source. I want to read that source, this source, and then try and figure out what the... Uh, thing every so story what would you mean. capture so so if you if for example you read four versions yeah. of a story yeah what what ca what captures you the most will come into well picture? I mean this is this is a sketch I don't normally show people the sketches in fact mm. I used to throw them away mm. and these are all done in pens and so I, when I sit with my mum we would go through what I want to depict and firstly when I read the story what really stuck struck with me was the fact that previous drawings had always shown the Tanda Burj as more of a uh, like a, quite a happy place to be and the kids were playing uh, Martha Gujri looked like she wasn't really too um, finding it too difficult remember she was 78 years old or 70 to 80 and the pictures normally show her as being 40 and so that's something that straight away I was like mum I've got to show the age she's got to look very old and the butcher and the children that are one of need to be, look cold I've got to show that it's minus 15, 15 degrees and I want to show that uh, they were trying to break their will then after that, we'll go into the background, which mm. is, I had, um, uh, is it Baba Moti Ram? Yeah. You know? So I, I thought he'd been left out so much of the historical drawings, and I thought he sacrificed so much as well. Absolutely. So I thought, I have to put him in there. And you can see he's originally on that side, mm. but I moved mm. him to that side because mm. it didn't work. Mm. And I always have Guru Gobind Singh's eagle mm. uh, with the children. The falcon. Want, yeah, so I wanted to look like he's looking over him. And so that's how it starts, and then it just kind of snowballs. Um, to the final picture and then what what I also saw in your work was one yeah. of the pictures that I saw was Chote Sabzade when yeah. they're actually being you know entombed in, in there and yeah, this is actually one of my favorites because what 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 we've seen is I've seen many pictures yeah. but I haven't seen the pictures where they are together and you know with their hands clapped together and around the shoulder yeah. so I think this is a very uh, beautiful expression of yeah. their love for each other yeah. and the fact that they're so bonded together in the whole yeah. thing that they're doing bonded even in the sacrifice they're making so w why did you want to do it yeah, because it we've yeah. never seen anything this like was that actually before. one of the most difficult drawings i didn't really know the story too well and when i read it i was like really kind of struck about uh, the determination of these two young boys and that's what I really wanted to show. Not, I mean, when, and then when I researched the, the stories and the pictures, it was always showing them doing fit there. And, and I just wanted to show something a little bit different, which is that two young brothers, just at the end of their life, comforting each other. Mm. And it's not supposed to show fear. Some people, when I first put it up, thought, oh, it looks like they're scared. No, it's nothing to do with fear. 
it's just the love between they resign to they know what's going to happen hmm. they've accepted it and so they're hugging each other before the end of the fate and this one was actually the one drawing between me and my mum that caused the most difficulty because I originally was going to do it very differently hmm. there was not going to be any chakra no pearls nothing because uh, I thought they're not going to give them that dignity so I was going to do a like, little bit of blood on their face and make it much more uh, horrific but she was right she told me look she wants it on there no because uh, I think also because uh, they were dressed yeah. uh, as if they were going to a wedding and that's yeah. how they were dressed for the occasion for yeah. the sacrifice as well so probably that's where your you know where your mum's yeah. input is in a way because she's says you know she's lived or yeah. kind of heard that history for yeah. so much more longer time than you would then when you say you know when uh, drawing those sick religious yeah. drawings you've moved on to more historical figures yeah. that you've drawn what have you seen personally as an artist which has changed within you or grown within you when you when you moved from say one frame to another one picture mm. to another yeah. how have you grown as a person or as an artist or as a Sikh well, as I, might think, say that. Um, I think that's big probably the biggest journey because as an artist I'm always growing you know mm. I'm always pushing myself but you know stuff like I've never really had the urge to go India or anything I didn't understand what's a nun for what's jump God it's the big deal mm. and so whenever I don't travel very often even out of London so it's given me an urge to kind of <clears throat> I think to myself I'd love to go there to see it <clears throat> so whenever I see these uh, pictures I've seen before one of the pictures that have really changed my viewpoint is when I see Guru Gobind Singh in a forest after the Battle of Jam and I've seen that picture so many times I didn't know what he was doing in the forest hmm. now when I look at that picture it has so much meaning to me hmm. and that's one picture I'm going to take my time on hmm. Hmm. and really do big really get the emotion of a father uh, kind of uh, losing his sons and not knowing where his ever sons are and his mother is hmm. so that's probably the one picture that i'm looking forward to the most to do but the most scared of doing as well because okay that's the journey as a Sikh. yeah as an artist who's do drawing history yeah how comfortable have you become you know how fluid your strokes have become yeah. how comfortable with the whole idea of depicting lot of dif detail mm. in that small amount of space yeah yeah i mean it's, it's it's difficult for me to explain to people because i think a lot of people look at my drawings and think it's very complicated but to me they're not complicated enough hmm. i know i can do better and i'm going to do better no for example if we see this Baba Deep yeah, Baba Deep things picture, are very complicated. which is said you know this is probably one of your favorites as well yeah. but there's so many layers to the background of the yeah. picture there's so many layers and you can actually see the depth of it all. Yeah. So when you, you know, you have to actually feel it to be able to draw all of it. But in a way, I think such pictures are, these are probably the later pictures than yeah, they are actually, the seven yeah. pictures. Yeah, these are some of my most recent. Most, most recent. Yeah. So uh, even as a person who's seen, or, you know, through your art, probably yeah. we can also see your journey, how you've grown. And I think personally, what when I see and when I see your previous pictures yeah. I think do you think your hand has become more fluid yeah, in catching it, the expression you, you're more lighter the strokes are less heavier yeah I mean a lot of people said my work's gone softer yes uh, it's lost a lot of the hard edge which is what makes a drawing more realistic and so yeah I think with anything when you when you do it you slowly it's a very slow gradual process but yeah I can feel now that I'm in a very different stage which is why I have to go bigger uh, mm. I've outgrown the paper mm. and I know that mm. it's like the paper is mm. too small for me now mm. and so even the the techniques I know I'm going to then implement them so I've grown a, and a it's lot. often said that an, uh, for an artist you, you know whatever you depict it also yeah. has some part of you in it yeah so do you think when pictures like this come across where you have to show an aggression yeah is is, is, is this kind of venting your own some kind of uh, bolted emotions or aggression within you is what finds I, a way I do think when I did this one I did this after I done Zero One and Pate Singh hmm. and that story is, has really struck me quite hard that and uh, you know doing a drawing kind of like with a very aggressive drawing this was a few drawings down and I remember drawing it thinking well you know if only he could take a vengeance on them but obviously Bandar Singh Bahadur did do it hmm. so yeah some of the drawings I do 
it was almost Listening like... Listening to Banda Singh Bahadur, yeah. I find this is more a Hollywood-esque, Robin yeah. Hood kind of a picture. Yeah, and I, I did that on purpose, because I wanted a really story. It was so unbelievable that I thought I have to give him an unbelievable depiction. And this is different, because most of the time when we see Baba Banda Singh Bahadur, we see him with the khanda or a sword. Yeah. We, we don't see him as an archer. Well, if you read the story, he was a hunter from yeah. very young. Hmm. He was an expert bowman. And so, although he turned and became Sikh or converted to Sikhs when he met Guru Gobind Singh Ji in 1708, he was a Hindu pandit before that for a long yeah. time. And he, st he, he didn't hunt for long, but it's, it's something like when, you're, when you've hunted from young, your weapon of choice would probably be a bow. Hmm. And so, I think a lot of people didn't depict him with a bow because it's very difficult to draw a bow. I find it difficult to get that perspective. No, I think probably because the Kanda is important because that is what Guru Gobind Singh Ji gave him at the end yeah. when, when he was sent to P Punjab. So probably that's the time when yeah. that Kanda takes a lot of significance and prominence in his life. And I'm, I'm yeah. glad when you draw such pictures. And I'm so, so glad that you haven't missed my Pagoji because yeah. my Pagoji has been drawn as well by so yeah. many people. And this I find particularly fascinating. Well, this is something that I redraw very big mm -hmm. because um, I was constrained by the paper. And whenever I saw, I saw my Bugger's picture so many times when I was growing up, mm. I just didn't understand who she was. She was on a horse, very clean cut, looked like she'd just come out of a wedding. And I thought, oh, what's going on? But when I read the story, I was, I was taken aback by you know, the bravery and the fact that she was the last person left on the battlefield. She was extremely injured. And so no one's really depicted her with cuts and bruises and how she might have looked towards the end of the battle. Hmm. She always normally looks very, very clean cut and pristine. Hmm. And so I think it just adds another dimension to my bugger hmm. um, showing that kind of uh, difficulty that she must have went through. Then again, as I say, do you think it's, it could, it's more because an artist's own reflection, yeah. you know, probably your own isolation or your own feelings yeah. or, you know, if you feel scarred or something in a way mm. that kind of finds its way into your art? I mean, it might do. Um, I, sometimes, you know, I haven't really thought too hard about certain drawings and some drawings I think a lot harder about, like bike and housing was the most that uh, is another a <laughs> superbly brilliant picture. And this is actually one of my most difficult drawings because I had to think a lot when I was drawing it. Hmm. And I read the story and I'd always seen Bike and Housing with uh, the Pani, but nothing else. You d I didn't understand the story. Hmm. So when I read it, it was uh, much more traumatic for him because he was arrested by the Sikhs. We're going to be tried for treason for giving the Pani to the enemy soldier. Hmm. And you'll see in my one, the Sikhs are pointing at him. And you'll see a Sikh soldier here asking for Bani, but he's giving it to the Mughal soldier. And so the reason I found this so difficult is because I had to think to myself, could I have done that? Because the background stories, and I understand why they were so angry, because there was a siege going on. You had children in there, yeah, Guru Gobind Singh these children, and he was outside giving Bani to the enemy soldier. Hmm. So I have, to be, I have to be truthful with you, I don't think I could have done it. Hmm. Um, and that just shows you what type of person he, he was, that he just saw human beings. Hmm. So this is the most thought-provoking drawing I've done. I think it is beautiful in the sense because uh, when, b besides the depth of the background that yeah. you've captured, you've also captured the essence of what we should be, you know, currently living our lives like. Yeah. And, and I think it ha this, the kind of thing that we see here would always be relevant to mankind because yeah. there's always be conflict between good and evil and there would be people who who would actually live like bomb to the lives yeah. of other people yeah. and bring that comfort that needs to be... But well, he's set, uh, set a bar so high hmm. that, you know, uh, even I think I'm a quite a compassionate person hmm. and I have a lot of empathy for people that I couldn't reach the bar and, I, you know, so I, you have to give him credit for what he did um, and I, I purposely made the Mughal much more injured than the Sikh soldier because hmm. I wanted to show that the Mughal was actually on death's door. Hmm. Hmm. And so he just chose the person that was... Who most, needed his... He needed the most... Uh, needed so he wasn't being uh, kind of vindictive. You know, you can see the Sikh soldier is not as injured as him. Yeah. So yeah. I purposely did that. And I think that's how he saw the battlefield himself. Hmm. So that's how you, you think he made the choices, that who needed him more? Yeah, yeah. For him to be... But I, don't to think he, I don't think he consciously saw a Mughal soldier there, a Sikh soldier. He just saw people that were people most there. injured. And when, like, as as you know, as history says that 
when he when he was actually brought to Guru Gobind Singh Ji, Guru Gobind Singh Ji yeah. said, "Why do you do that?" And he said, "I I see your reflection in everyone." Yeah. And Guru Sahib actually gave him the first aid box that you know whoever you just feed or whoever you give yeah. water to, please make sure that you also you know put some. Uh, yeah, I mean it's an amazing. It's, it's like one of the one of the best stories I think that we've got as Sikhs. A lot of our stories are quiet. Originally, that drawing was not going to be in the gallery because I did 22 drawings. And I said to my mum, I've got to put something a bit s uh, more compassionate in. Originally, I was going to have Hari Singh Nalawal fighting the tiger when he was 15. I so I stopped doing that one. And I'm really glad I did this one instead because it showed uh, another side to Sikhs that uh, sometimes aren't depicted. Uh, it looks as like well as they should be. Yeah, as well as they should be. And uh, <laughs> the other thing that I also uh, saw when we also visited your gallery and also well, when I saw some pictures, there are pictures which are more recent in occurrence, like the pictures of... Yeah, uh, so this is the Golden Temple, hmm. one of my most favourite drawings, because technically making something look gold in black and white is... Yeah. Uh, I thought, well, my mum said it was impossible. So when I finished it, I was like, all right, I'm going to draw the Golden Temple big now. So now that I've got the test, this is almost like a test. I'm going to do it double the size and I'm going to draw the Golden Temple. Very similar to this, but huge. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. this is the picture that, uh, you know, sometimes I doubt myself. And when I finished, I was like, Mum, look, I've done it. Yeah, and she, she said, yeah, you've done it. Mm -hmm. So I was happy with that. And uh, this, this, like, they look more like World War. Yeah, this is, um, this, this drawing, we're actually going to be um, exhibiting these two drawings, actually, at a, an event on 1984. And the reason I, this drawing, I mentioned that is because when I originally done this drawing, it was about showing the heroics of Sikh soldiers. Hmm. And it's not copied from my picture, it's copied from, like, three or four different pictures, and hmm. I've just hmm. made it into one. But also, um, it has a relevance to 1984, because Sikh soldiers were involved in the attack on the Golden Temple, so that's mm. why I'm exhibiting it with 1984 drawings. Mm. When, you're, when you're drawing such pictures, yeah. when you're drawing history like you did, say, Maharaj of the Leap Yeah, this is one of my kind of favourites, just because technically mm. drawing pearls and this amount of pearls was very difficult, and I think I've really captured um, his life story. And reading his story was very difficult to read as well, because... Mm. Um, it's quite a tragic, tragic Yeah, tragic I mean, a lot story. of people say he kind of uh, gave up his faith, and it, he didn't. He was very young when they took him. Yeah. And having the British Empire in your back, yeah. you know, no one could, very few people, people would have been able to withstand that kind of pressure. So when I'd done the drawing, I wanted to show him like this, because sometimes they show him without his bug on or without his thing, and he's more anglicized. Hmm. And there's another picture of uh, his wife that we saw. And, uh, that well, that's actually his daughter, but I didn't actually bring that with me. Okay, um, his daughter. And when do you do, when when it comes to historical depictions, as he said, you you read the story, you yeah. listen to the story, and then uh, you have your own imagination as an mm. artist, and you you take you try to imagine in a way, as you say, yeah. from from your stance, you, you try to balance out the probabilities, and then draw a picture out. Yeah, I think the latest drawing I've done, and when I talk about the paper being too small, hmm. this is the paper drawing that finally told me the paper's too small. Hmm. So I'm, I'm going to redraw this big, and this was a Jajar Singh and Ajit Singh at a Battle of Chumkod. Hmm. And um, you can see Guru Gobind Singh Ji is in there, and it's a very dynamic kind of picture of the youngest brother and the oldest brother. Hmm. And when I originally done the concept for it, it was very different, hmm. uh, because I actually done it without the fault. Hmm and uh, without too many soldiers in the background. Mm. And I have to admit I was tired because this was like one of the last drawings I've done. i just done like 18 or 19 over a few months. And my mum was like, no, you've got to draw the fort. And you can see the fort in the background with all the bricks. Mm. And when I draw something, I'm going to draw it properly. I'm not going to leave the bricks out. Yeah. So you can see every brick has been drawn. Yes. And so it's one of the drawings. When I finished, I was like, oh, thank God I did do it that way because I think I've and it's also very interesting to know that the backgrounds that you've done to most of the pictures because it's there's a moon and there are stars and yeah. it's it's mostly a full moon night with starlit yeah. things and uh, Guru Gobind Singh Ji's barge flying yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. What what strength do you draw from from such things in the background? Well, the thing is, that I, I want to keep a consistency between each drawing. So each drawing has a link. So you see, another a, one, yeah. Yeah, so you see, Guru Gobind Singh Ji has a mm. moon in the background. Yeah, yeah. You'll see that you have uh, the full moon in others. Yeah, yeah. You'll see that the eagles are there. So when you go from one drawing to the next, it's almost like, oh, you can see that's Raj's Raj Singh Tattle's drawing, and that's part of the same 
uh, set of drawings that we we're, that I'm planning to do. Hmm. And uh, you've mentioned your mum quite a lot yeah. in this film. Uh, is she your basic inspiration for art? Oh, you've yes. done her portrait as well. Yeah, this is an old portrait. I'm going to read it. But yeah, she's 110%. Without her, I wouldn't be doing the sea car work. I did the sea car exhibition for her. Mm. It's gone to something different now. I'm I've, I've fell in love with the sea car work. But originally, I have to admit, I want to win my mum over. So she probably put you in the right spot and gave you a direction to what you were yeah, doing. Yeah, so like uh, the first drawing I showed of my sea car was Guru Gobind Singh. Singh. You know, I done it for my local Guru Dwayne Layton. And when I could see the, the her eyes change because my old artwork she wouldn't look at. And I thought, oh, I'm going to do another one, another one. Then I booked the gallery out and I did the whole exhibition after that. So she is the inspiration behind, like anybody, yeah. uh, sons. How really. was the exhibition? Because we saw the exhibition. Yeah. How, how do you rate the exhibition? How do you rate as an artist? Was it? Do you think it was I'm a, quite successful? Were you happy with the response you got? Yeah, after, I mean, obviously not everything goes perfectly. But I would say, I'd say 9 out of 10. I achieved everything I wanted to achieve. A few little things were completely out of my control that I couldn't actually anticipate happening. So other than I put 22 art Sikh art drawings, all unique, covered every kind of uh, facet of Sikh, uh, history, religion, and culture. And the main thing is my mum was happy. So <laughs> I said to myself, if my mum can walk in and walk out and be happy, I'm happy. But I think because of the fact that the pressure of the Sikh community, and I want to also teach the wider British community, it's in Walthamstow, so very, uh, there's no Sikhs there. So I had a lot of white people coming, British people. And when, by the time they left, they said, oh wow, this is amazing. I didn't know this much about Sikhs. So I achieved what I wanted to, yeah. Okay, so what are your future plans with regards to art and with regards to Sikh art in general? Well, my next project is going to be about something else I'm very passionate about, and that is about uh, the horrors of eating meat. And so uh, I've been vegetarian all my life, and I'm a staunch. Actually, as I've got older, I've become more uh, like a vegan. Staunch believer. Yeah, staunch believer. So my my drawings are actually going to be quite big and very thought-provoking drawings on the hypocrisy of eating meat. And so my first drawings will be Silence of the Lambs, and it's going to be a little girl playing with a lamb, and in the background there'll be the abattoir of her father killing the lambs. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go, and then after that I'm doing sea cart work drawings, bigger. So Guru Gobind Singh and a horse is going to be one of my first. Mm. And then uh, throughout my lifetime... Uh, when, you, when you want to draw Guru Sarbans, do you, do you think you, you have to make a, some kind of uh, spiritual effort in the sense that you, you know what you're drawing, you're not just copying Sobha yeah. Singh or someone. Yeah. You're actually getting a feeling within you that this is how I would want Guru Sahib to look like. Yeah, I do think to myself, in the past I thought to myself, who would I want to meet from history? And in, he, none of the gurus ever come in my head. Hmm. It was like, uh, you know, Einstein, this way. And now I'm like, I want to meet him. And hmm. so I could draw him for one. And so I want to one day do a depiction where um, I've really captured the man. And that's my goal. It might take my lifetime. And I'm glad it's going to be such a difficult thing because he was such a complicated man himself as well so the picture has to be mind-blowing mm. and I will do it it's just a matter of when one when. day it will click and I'll know and then I'll be happy once that's done so wishing you very good luck with yeah. all your future works that you want to do and it, I think uh, more artists like you need to come forward yeah. we also need to talk about the issues like we have which our community generally won't talk about, say yeah. autism is one, yeah. and other issues that we have, probably mental health issues yeah. or you know uh, domestic violence issues that our society needs to be more open, open and yeah. talk about so that help can be uh, generated for all of them. But Sikh art in, in that historical glory and perspective yeah. needs to be told, and Sikh people need to tell it because when it's your history, you're very. Uh, she, you know, you make an effort, you mm. make an extra effort that you're not depicting something which is not right for yeah. the Sikhs. You know, initially whatever history was written about Sikhs mm. was written by non-Sikhs. So yeah. there are so many things that we wonder today as Sikhs that, you know, is it correct or is mm. it not correct? Should that be in it or should that not be in it? Yeah. So I think we need more Sikh artists and who can actually depict Sikh heart in the right perspective and then we can tell our stories in yeah. our way. Normally it's you know, top down, the Western people are yeah. telling, this is what you do, and this is what you look like. Yeah, so it's kind but of, it's, it's a distorted view of history. Absolutely. And, to take and when we do our own history, yeah. when uh, a Sikh depicts his own history, he yeah. would know what he's doing. 
with it and probably you know, there's so much as you said about yeah. Sikh history that needs to be told to the world and very good luck with yeah. all your future efforts uh, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this program as much as I've enjoyed having a conversation with this spectacular artist today with this we end, come to the end of the show when we'll come up with something very interesting in some time soon till then why did you go Khalsa why did you go Fateh ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਸਤਕਾਰ ਜੋ ਭਾਈ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਭਾਈ ਜਸਵੰਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਰੋਡੇ ਪਹੁੰਚੇ ਨੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਿੱਖ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟ ਫੈਡਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਸਾਬਕਾ ਆਗੂ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਸੰਤ ਜਰਨੈਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਪਿੰਡਰਾਂ ਵਾਲੇ ਮਹਾਨ ਜਰਨੈਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਕੌਮ ਦੇ 20ਵੀਂ ਸਦੀ ਦੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਿੰਡ ਤੋਂ ਵੀ ਨੇ ਔਰ ਰਿਸ਼ਤੇਦਾਰਾਂ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਵੀ ਨੇ ਮੈਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਕਰਾਂਗਾ ਭਾਈ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਭਾਈ ਜਸਵੰਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਰੋਡੇ ਜੀ ਨੂੰ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਸਟੇਜ ਤੇ ਆਉਣ ਤੇ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ 10 ਮਿੰਟ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਵਿਚਾਰ ਸਾਂਝੇ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਫਤਿਹ ਪ੍ਰਵਾਨ ਕਰੋ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਨ ਕਰਨ ਦਾ ਸੁਭਾਗ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਤ ਹੋਇਆ ਔਰ ਪਿਛਲੇ 8 ਦਿਨਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਹੀ ਸਿੱਖ ਸੰਗਤਾਂ ਦਾ ਸਿੱਖ ਕੌਮ ਦੇ ਭਾਈਚਾਰੇ ਦਾ ਵਿਦੇਸ਼ ਵਿੱਚ ਬੈਠਿਆਂ ਆਪਸੀ ਪਿਆਰ ਵੇਖ ਕੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਘਰ ਪ੍ਰਤੀ ਸ਼ਰਧਾ ਵੇਖ ਕੇ ਔਰ ਗੁਰਸਿੱਖੀ ਪ੍ਰਤੀ ਨਿਸ਼ਚਾ ਰੁਚੀ ਸੋਚ ਵੇਖ ਕੇ ਮਨ ਬਹੁਤ ਖੁਸ਼ ਹੋਇਆ ਔਰ ਇਹ ਮਹਿਸੂਸ ਵੀ ਹੋਇਆ ਕਿ ਸੁਣੀ ਪਕਾਰ ਦਤਾਰ ਪ੍ਰਭ ਗੁਰ ਨਾਨਕ ਜਗ ਮਾਹੇ ਪਠਾਇਆ ਦੇ ਜੋ ਅਵਸਥਾ ਬਣੀ ਸੀ ਇਸ ਬ੍ਰਹਿਮੰਡ ਨੂੰ ਇਸ ਪੂਰੇ ਯੂਨੀਵਰਸ ਨੂੰ ਧਰਮ ਦੇ ਸੱਚ ਦੇ ਰੱਬ ਦੀ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਤੀ ਦੇ ਮਾਰਗ ਤੇ ਚਲਾਉਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਜੋ ਅਕਾਲ ਪੁਰਖ ਦੀ ਜੋਤ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਨਕ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਨਾਮ ਦੇ ਸਰੀਰ ਵਿੱਚ 239 ਸਾਲ ਵੱਖ-ਵੱਖ ਜਾਮਿਆਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਵਿਚਰਦੀ ਹੋਈ ਨੰਦੇੜ ਦੀ ਧਰਤੀ ਤੇ ਇਸ ਸਮੁੱਚੀ ਸ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਟੀ ਦੇ ਤਾਰਨ ਹਾਰ ਵਜੋਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਉਸ ਜੋਤ ਨੂੰ ਵੱਖਰੇ ਵੱਖਰੇ ਪੜਾਵਾਂ ਤੇ ਵੱਖਰੇ ਵੱਖਰੇ ਤਰੀਕਿਆਂ ਰਾਹੀਂ ਇੱਕ ਐਸੇ ਸਚਿਆਰ ਮਨੁੱਖ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਉਤਪਤੀ ਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਸਾਧਨ ਵਜੋਂ ਵਿਚਰਦਿਆਂ ਜੋ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਕੱਲੇ ਮਨੁੱਖ ਮਾਤਰ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਹੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੋਰ ਵੀ ਪਰਾਣੀ ਪੰਖੇਰੂ ਜੀਵ ਜਾਤੀ ਦੇ ਕਲਿਆਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਸਹਾਇਕ ਦੇ ਰੂਪ 'ਚ ਇੱਕ ਅਗਵਾਈ ਕਰਤਾ ਦੇ ਰੂਪ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਦਾਨੀ ਦੇ ਰੂਪ ਵਿੱਚ ਵਿਚਰਿਆ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀ ਦੇ ਰੂਪ ਵਿੱਚ ਵਿਚਰਿਆ ਸੇਵਾ ਤੇ ਸਿਮਰਨ ਦੇ ਰੂਪ ਵਿੱਚ ਵਿਚਰਿਆ ਅੱਜ ਆਪਾਂ ਉਸ ਅਕਾਲ ਪੁਰਖ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਜੋਤ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਚਰਨਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਬੈਠ ਕੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਸਮੇਂ ਤੇ ਸੁਭਾਸਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਫਲ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਦੇ ਉਹ ਜੋਤ ਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਸੱਚ ਦੇ ਸਿਧਾਂਤ ਨੂੰ ਕਾਇਮ ਰੱਖਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਤੱਤੀ ਤਵੀ ਤੇ ਬਹਿਣਾ ਪਿਆ ਕਦੇ ਉਸ ਜੋਤ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਣੀ ਬੇਟੀ ਦੇ ਵਿਆਹ ਨੂੰ ਵਿੱਚੇ ਛੱਡ ਕੇ ਮੈਦਾਨੇ ਜੰਗ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਸ ਹੱਕ ਸੱਚ ਇਨਸਾਫ ਦੇ ਸਿਧਾਂਤ ਦੀ ਸਲਾਮਤੀ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਜੰਗ ਕਰਨੇ ਪਏ ਕਦੇ ਉਸ ਜੋਤ ਨੂੰ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਸਮਾਂ ਆਇਆ ਜਦੋਂ ਆਪਣਾ ਸਾਰਾ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਹੀ ਇਸ ਰੋਹਾਨੀ ਮਾਰਗ ਤੇ ਚੱਲਣ ਵਾਲੇ ਉਸ ਖਾਲਸੇ ਦੀ ਸਲਾਮਤੀ ਤੇ ਸਿਰਜਣਾ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਤੱਕ ਨੂੰ ਕੱਲੇ ਕੱਲੇ ਕਰਵਾ ਕੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਉਜਲ ਭਵਿੱਖ ਸਾਡੇ ਖੁਸ਼ਹਾਲ ਪਿੱਕ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਕੁਰਬਾਨ ਕਰਨਾ ਪਿਆ ਔਰ ਉਹ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀ ਅੱਖਾਂ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਦੇਖਦਿਆਂ ਵੇਖ ਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਅਕਾਲ ਪੁਰਖ ਦਾ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਜੈਕਾਰੇ ਦੇ ਰੂਪ ਵਿੱਚ ਸ਼ੁਕਰਾਨਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਉੱਥੇ ਨਾਲੇ ਨਾਰਾ ਵੀ ਲਾਇਆ ਪੰਥ ਵਸੇ ਮੈਂ ਉਜੜਾ ਮਨ ਚਾਉ ਕਨੇਰਾ ਔਰ ਉਸੇ ਸਤਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਬਖਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਸਦਕਾ ਕਦੇ ਉਸ ਖਾਲਸੇ ਨੂੰ ਕਾਨੂੰ ਵਾਣ ਦੇ ਜੰਗ ਵਿੱਚ
ਇਸ ਮਨੁੱਖਤਾ ਤੇ ਜ਼ੁਲਮ ਤਸ਼ੱਦਦ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਲੇ ਜਰਵਾਣਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਵੀ ਅੱਗੇ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਡਟ ਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਮੂੰਹ ਤੋੜ ਕੇ ਉਸ ਦੁਖੀ ਮਾਨਵਤਾ ਨੂੰ ਸੁਰੱਖਿਅਤ ਤੇ ਖੁਸ਼ਹਾਲ ਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਨਜ਼ਰੀਏ ਤੋਂ ਆਪਣਾ ਫਰਜ਼ ਨਿਭਾਉਂਦਾ ਗਿਆ ਇੱਕ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਸਮਾਂ ਆਇਆ ਜਦੋਂ ਉਸ ਖਾਲਸੇ ਦੀ ਜਨਮ ਭੂਮੀ ਕਰਮ ਭੂਮੀ ਦੇ ਹਾਲਾਤ ਐਸੇ ਬਣੇ ਕਿ ਜਿਸ ਜਨਮ ਤੇ ਕਰਮ ਭੂਮੀ ਨੂੰ ਵਿਦੇਸ਼ੀ ਜਰਵਾਣੇ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਕਹਿ ਲਈਏ ਕਿ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੀ ਧਰਤੀ ਤੇ ਅੱਜ ਆਪਾਂ ਬੈਠ ਕੇ ਫਿਰ ਵੀ ਉਸ ਧਰਤੀ ਦੇ ਹਾਕਮਾਂ ਨਾਲੋਂ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਆਜ਼ਾਦ ਕਰਵਾਉਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਨਗੂਣੀ ਗਿਣਤੀ ਦੇ ਹੁੰਦਿਆਂ ਵੱਡੀਆਂ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀਆਂ ਕਰਕੇ ਧਰਤੀ ਦੇ ਉਸ ਟੁਕੜੇ ਨੂੰ ਆਜ਼ਾਦ ਕਰਵਾਇਆ ਪਰ ਉਹ ਲੋਕ ਅਕਿਰਤ ਘੰਟਾ ਦਾ ਆਪਣਾ ਸਬੂਤ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਜੀ ਦੀਆਂ ਕੀਤੀਆਂ ਹੋਈਆਂ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਭੁੱਲ ਕੇ ਔਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਹਿਬਾਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਕੀਤੇ ਹੋਏ ਪਰਪਕਾਰਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਭੁੱਲ ਕੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਆਪਣਾ ਆਪ ਨਿਸ਼ਾਵਰ ਕਰਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਮਾਨ ਇੱਜ਼ਤ ਆਬਰੂ ਧਰਮ ਬਚਾਇਆ ਉੱਥੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਰਾਜ ਭਾਗ ਦੇ ਵਾਰਿਸ ਵੀ ਬਣਾਇਆ ਉਹ ਕੀਤੇ ਹੋਏ ਪਰਪਕਾਰਾਂ ਦਾ ਅਵਜਾਨਾ ਚਕਾਉਣ ਦੀ ਥਾਂ ਸ਼ੁਕਰਾਨਾ ਕਰਨ ਦੀ ਥਾਂ ਉਹ ਰਾਜ ਸੱਤਾ ਦੇ ਹੰਕਾਰ ਜਾਂ ਲਾਲਚ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਾਲਮ ਬਣ ਬੈਠੇ ਤੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਹਾਲਾਤ ਤੇ ਬਣੇ ਕਿ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਜ਼ਾਦੀ ਲਈ ਸੀ ਕਿਤੇ ਨਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਫਿਰ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਉਹ ਲੋਕ ਹੀ ਕਿਸੇ ਨਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਰੂਪ 'ਚ ਚੰਗੇ ਲੱਗੇ ਉਸੇ ਧਰਤੀ ਤੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਪਨਾਹ ਲੈਣੀ ਪਈ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਰੁਜ਼ਗਾਰ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਤ ਕਰਨਾ ਪਿਆ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਸੁਰੱਖਿਆ ਲੈਣੀ ਪਈ ਔਰ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਇਸ ਗੱਲ ਦੀ ਖੁਸ਼ੀ ਵੀ ਹੋ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਬੇਸ਼ੱਕ ਇਹ ਲੋਕ ਉਸ ਧਰਤੀ ਦਾ ਧਨ ਮਾਲ ਅਸਬਾਬ ਲੈਣ ਗਏ ਸਨ ਪਰ ਫਿਰ ਵੀ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਇਹ ਕਿਤੇ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਨਹੀਂ ਪੜਿਆ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਰਾਜ ਭਾਗ ਨੂੰ ਸਲਾਮਤ ਰੱਖਣ ਲਈ ਜ਼ੁਲਮ ਤਸ਼ੱਦਦ ਤੇ ਲੜਾਈ ਦੇ ਰੂਪ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਕੀਤੇ ਜਲਿਆਂ ਵਾਲੇ ਬਾਗ ਦਾ ਸਾਕਾ ਵੀ ਵਾਪਰਿਆ ਪਰ ਬੀਬੀਆਂ ਦੀ ਇੱਜ਼ਤ ਆਬਰੂ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਤੇ ਜ਼ੁਲਮ ਤਸ਼ੱਦਦ ਨੰਗੇ ਰੂਪ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਹਕਮਾਂ ਨੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੀਤਾ ਜੋ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਆਪਦੇ ਰਾਜ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪਦੀ ਧਰਤੀ ਤੇ ਜਿਹਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀਆਂ ਦੇ ਕੇ ਖੁਸ਼ੀ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਘਰ ਬਰਬਾਦ ਕਰਾ ਕੇ ਕੁਰਕੀਆਂ ਕਰਾ ਕੇ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਤ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਸਾਡਾ ਮਾਨ ਸਨਮਾਨ ਤੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਜਿਉਣ ਦੇ ਹੱਕ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਮਹਿਫੂਜ਼ ਨਾ ਹੋ ਸਕੇ ਮਿਲ ਵੀ ਨਾ ਸਕੇ ਔਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਅਤਿਆਚਾਰਾਂ ਦਾ ਜਵਾਬ ਦੇਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਫਿਰ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਇਸ ਗੁਰੂ ਜੋਤ ਨੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਤੇ ਤਰਸ ਖਾ ਕੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਉਸ ਖਾਲਸਾਈ ਜਹੋ ਜਲਾਲ ਨੂਰਾਨੀ ਜਲਵੇ ਨੂੰ ਫਿਰ ਪਰਜਵਲਤ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਉਸ ਸਰੂਪ ਨੂੰ ਫਿਰ ਦੁਬਾਰਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਸਕਾਰ ਰੂਪ ਚ ਅਮਲੀ ਰੂਪ ਚ ਪੈਦਾ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਸੰਤ ਬਾਬਾ ਜਰਨੈਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਭਿੰਡਰਾਂ ਵਾਲਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਰੂਪ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਐਸੀ ਰੋਹਾਨੀ ਰੂਹ ਇੱਕ ਐਸਾ ਖਾਲਸਾਈ ਜਹੋ ਜਲਾਲ ਵਾਲਾ ਜਰਨੈਲ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਜਿਨੇ ਇਹ ਸਾਰੇ ਹਾਲਾਤਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਭਾਪਦਿਆਂ ਹੋਇਆਂ ਫਿਰ ਇੱਕ ਨਾਰਾ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਕਿ ਜੇ ਜਿਉਣਾ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਅਣਖ ਨਾਲ ਜੇ ਮਰਨਾ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਧਰਮ ਲਈ ਅਸੀਂ ਦੋ ਨੰਬਰ ਦੇ ਸ਼ਹਿਰੀ ਬਣ ਕੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਿਉਣਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਉਸ ਧਰਤੀ ਤੇ ਜਿਸ ਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਜ਼ਾਦ ਕਰਵਾਇਆ ਔਰ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਸਿੱਖ ਕੌਮ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਡਟ ਕੇ ਸਾਥ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਹਰ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਆਪੋ ਆਪਣੀ ਸਮਰੱਥਾ ਮੁਤਾਬਕ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਇਸ ਸੰਘਰਸ਼ਮਈ ਕਾਫਲੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪਣਾ ਯੋਗਦਾਨ ਪਾਇਆ ਜੋ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਧੰਤਾ ਦੇ ਯੋਗ ਇਹ ਹਰ ਕਿਸੇ ਦੇ ਕਰਮਾਂ ਦਾ ਖੇਤਰ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਅਕਾਲ ਪੁਰਖ ਦੀ ਬਖਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਕੋਈ ਮੂਰਲੇ ਮਹਾਜ ਤੇ ਲੜਾਈ ਲੜ ਲੈਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਕੋਈ ਉਸ ਮਹਾਜ ਤੇ ਲੜਾਈ ਲੜਨ ਵਾਲਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਪ੍ਰਸ਼ਾਦੇ ਪਾਣੀ ਦੇ ਰੂਪ ਵਿੱਚ 
ਇਹ ਵੀ ਕਿਤੇ ਨਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਕੋਈ ਐਸਾ ਸਮਾਂ ਬਣ ਗਿਆ ਕਿ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਉਹ ਕਾਲੇ ਧੱਬੇ ਵੀ ਵੇਖਣੇ ਪਏ ਪਰ ਮੈਂ ਇਸ ਗੱਲ ਤੇ ਫਖਰ ਕਰ ਸਕਦਾ ਹਾਂ ਬਾਈ ਇੰਦਰਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਵਰਗੇ ਯੋਧਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਤੇ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਉਸ ਬਹੁਤ ਵਿਖੜੇ ਸਮੇਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਆਪਣੇ ਸੰਘਰਸ਼ਮਈ ਜੀਵਨ ਤੇ ਕੋਈ ਐਸਾ ਦਾਗ ਨਹੀਂ ਲੱਗਣ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਭਾਈ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਗਿਆਨੀ ਮੋਹਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਬਾਕਮਾਲ ਤੇ ਖੂਬਸੂਰਤ ਕਥਾ ਸਰਵਣ ਕਰਾ ਰਹੇ ਸਨ ਭਾਈ ਦਿਆਲਾ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਭਾਈ ਮਤੀ ਦਾਸ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਯੋਧਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਹੀ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਪਿਆਰ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਮਾਸੀ ਦੇ ਬੇਟੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਜ਼ਿਕਰ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਵੀ ਇੱਕ ਦਿਨ ਚੈਨਲ ਤੇ ਹੋਇਆ ਸੀ ਭਾਈ ਗੁਰਮੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਚਾਕੀ ਖਾੜਕੂ ਸਫਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਚੰਗੀ ਕਰਕੇ ਜਾਣਿਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਸਤਕਾਰਯੋਗ ਸਾਡੇ ਭੂਆ ਜੀ ਜਗਿੰਦਰਪੁਰ ਜੀ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਸਬੱਬ ਬਣਿਆ ਬੇਟੀ ਦੇ ਵਿਆਹ ਵਿੱਚ ਸ਼ਾਮਲ ਹੋਣ ਦਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀਆਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਹੀ ਸਾਡੀ ਕੌਮ ਨੇ ਖੜੀ ਹੋਣਾ ਹੈ ਆਪਣਾ ਸਫਰ ਦ੍ਰਿੜਤਾ ਨਾਲ ਤੈਅ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੈ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਤੀਆਂ ਕਰਨੀਆਂ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਸੰਤ ਬਾਬਾ ਜਰਨੈਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਭਿੰਡਰਾਂ ਵਾਲਿਆਂ ਨੇ ਖੁਦ ਇੱਕ ਜਥੇ ਦਾਰ ਦੇ ਰੂਪ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੌਮ ਦੀ ਗਵਾਹੀ ਕੀਤੀ ਉੱਥੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਦੇ ਛੇ ਜੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਵੀ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀ ਕੀਤੀ ਮੈਂ ਕੇਵਲ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀ ਦੇ ਨਜ਼ਰੀਏ ਤੋਂ ਇਹ ਗੱਲ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਜੇ ਮੈਂ ਅੱਜ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਖੜਾ ਹਾਂ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਮਹਾਪੁਰਸ਼ਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਰ ਮਹਾਪੁਰਸ਼ਾਂ ਦਾ ਸੰਗ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਤ ਹੋਇਆ ਉੱਥੇ ਗੁਰਮਤ ਦੀ ਗੁਰਸਿੱਖੀ ਦੀ ਦਾਤ ਗੁਰਬਾਣੀ ਸੰਥਿਆ ਦੀ ਦਾਤ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਸੰਬੰਧ ਹੋਣ ਦੀ ਵਜ੍ਹਾ ਕਰਕੇ ਵੀ ਮਿਲੀ ਉਹ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀ ਦੀ ਖੁਸ਼ਬੋਈ ਕਰਕੇ ਵੀ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਨੂੰ ਕੋਈ ਸੇਧ ਮਿਲੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਤਾਂ ਕੋਈ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਇਹ ਵੀ ਖਤਰਾ ਹੋ ਸਕਦਾ ਸੀ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਉਸ ਵੇਲੇ ਕਾਲਜਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਨਾਸਤਿਕਤਾ ਦਾ ਮਾਹੌਲ ਸੀ ਨਸ਼ਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਮਾਹੌਲ ਸੀ ਮੈਂ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰੇ ਐਸ ਸਟੇਜ ਤੋਂ ਬੋਲਣਾ ਤੇ ਕੀ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਦਰਸ਼ਨ ਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਵੀ ਕਾਬਲ ਨਾ ਰਹਿੰਦਾ ਸੋ ਮੇਰੀ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਇਹੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਲੰਮਾ ਸਮਾਂ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਨਾਲ ਬਹੁਤਾ ਵਿਚਾਰ ਨਾਲ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਸਾਰੇ ਕੁਝ ਤੋਂ ਜਾਣੂ ਹੋ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਵੀ ਕਿਸੇ ਨਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਰੂਪ ਚ ਉਹ ਸਾਰਾ ਹੰਡਾਇਆ ਹੈ ਮੁਕ ਦੀ ਸਿਰੇ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਇਹ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸੰਘਰਸ਼ ਦੇ ਦੌਰਾਨ ਕਿਤੇ ਨਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਆਗੂਆਂ ਦੀ ਅਣਗਹਿਲੀ ਕਰਕੇ ਮਹਾਪੁਰਸ਼ਾਂ ਦੇ ਜਾਣ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਜੋ ਭਾਈ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਜ਼ਿਕਰ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਫੈਡਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਦਾ ਉਹ ਦੌਰ ਵੀ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਸੀ ਜਦੋਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਨੌਜਵਾਨ ਫਖਰ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਸੋਹਣੀਆਂ ਦਸਤਾਰਾਂ ਸਜਾ ਕੇ ਨੌਜਵਾਨ ਭੈਣਾਂ ਵੀ ਨਾਲ ਅੰਮ੍ਰਿਤ ਧਾਰੀ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਉਸ ਚੜ੍ਹਦੀ ਕਲਾ ਵਾਲੇ ਕਾਫਲੇ ਦਾ ਹਿੱਸਾ ਸਨ ਪਰ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਕੌਮ ਨੂੰ ਇਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਵੀ ਕੋਈ ਸਿੱਖਣ ਨੂੰ ਮਿਲਣਾ ਸੀ ਕੋਈ ਸਬਕ ਮਿਲਣਾ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਉਹ ਹਾਲਾਤ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨੌਜਵਾਨ ਨਾਸਤਿਕਤਾ ਦਾ ਸ਼ਿਕਾਰ ਹੋ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਮੈਂ ਇਸ ਦੇਸ਼ ਬਾਰੇ ਅਕਸਰ ਇੱਕ ਨਾ ਪੱਖੀ ਇੱਥੇ ਇਸ ਦੇਸ਼ ਦੇ ਬਸ਼ਿੰਦਿਆਂ ਬਾਰੇ ਇੱਕ ਨਾ ਪੱਖੀ ਨਜ਼ਰੀਆ ਸੁਣਿਆ ਸੀ ਪਰ ਮੈਂ ਪਰਸੋਂ ਲੰਡਨ ਦੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਭੀੜ ਭੜਕੇ ਵਾਲੇ ਇਲਾਕੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਗੁਜ਼ਰ ਰਹੇ ਸੀ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਇਸ ਗੱਲ ਦਾ ਹੀ ਸਵਾਲ ਮੇਰੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਪੈਦਾ ਹੋਇਆ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਕਿਹੜੇ ਲੋਕ ਹੈ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਬਾਰੇ ਇੱਕ ਇੰਨਾ ਗਲਤ ਨਜ਼ਰੀਆ ਪੇਸ਼ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਦੇ ਇੱਕ ਕਾਮਕ ਪੱਖ ਬਾਰੇ ਵੀ ਉਹ ਤਾਂ ਭੱਦੇ ਨੇ ਪਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਉਹ ਤਾਂ ਇੱਕ ਸਲੀਕੇਦਾਰ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਚੱਲ ਰਹੇ ਸਨ ਸਾਰੇ ਪੂਰੇ ਤਨ ਤੇ ਕੱਪੜੇ ਪਹਿਨੇ ਹੋਏ ਸਨ ਕਿਸੇ ਦਾ ਦੂਜੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਵੱਲ ਕੋਈ ਧਿਆਨ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਟ੍ਰੇਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪੋ ਆਪਣੀ ਪੜ੍ਹਾਈ ਵਿੱਚ ਰੁੱਝੇ ਸਨ ਪਰ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਵੀ ਜਾਣਦੇ ਹੋ ਇਸ ਸਟੇਜ ਤੋਂ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਬੜੇ ਦੁੱਖ ਨਾਲ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਪੈ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਅਫਸੋਸ ਨਾਲ ਕਹਿਣ
ਉੱਥੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਦੂਜੇ ਵਿਦੇਸ਼ੀਆਂ ਤੋਂ ਖੋਇਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਉਹ ਖਜ਼ਾਨਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਫਖਰ ਤੇ ਅਣਖ ਤੇ ਗੈਰਤ ਦੀ ਨਿਸ਼ਾਨੀ ਕਿਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਲਿਖਿਆ ਟੀਪੂ ਸੁਲਤਾਨ ਤੋਂ ਆ ਚੀਜ਼ਾਂ ਖੋਈਆਂ ਕਿਤੇ ਮਹਾਰਾਣਾ ਪ੍ਰਤਾਪ ਤੋਂ ਖੋਈਆਂ ਕਿਤੇ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਦੇ ਆ ਸ਼ਸਤਰ ਔਰ ਸਾਡਾ ਲੁੱਟਿਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਧਨ ਸਾਡੀ ਲੁੱਟੀ ਹੋਈ ਵਿਰਾਸਤ ਨੂੰ ਉਹ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਉੱਚੇ ਥਾਂ ਤੇ ਬੜੇ ਇੱਕ ਸਲੀਕੇ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਸਜਾ ਕੇ ਰੱਖਿਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਹੈ ਪਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਮਾਫ ਕਰਨਾ ਕਿ ਕੌਮ ਦਾ ਕਾਫੀ ਵੱਡਾ ਹਿੱਸਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਨਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਉਸ ਗੌਰਮਬਈ ਅਣਖ ਵਾਲੇ ਔਰ ਫਖਰ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਲੇ ਉਸ ਵਿਰਸੇ ਨੂੰ ਸੰਭਾਲਣ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਿਤੇ ਨਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਢਿੱਲੇ ਪੈ ਗਏ ਅਸੀਂ ਅਣਭੋਲ ਰਹਿ ਗਏ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਕਾਲ ਦੇ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਤੋਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਪੁਰਾਤਨ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਹੀ ਸਿਧਾਂਤ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਅਨਮੋਲ ਵਿਰਸਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਕੱਚੀਆਂ ਗੜਾਂ ਕਿਤੇ ਉਹ ਸਰਹੰਦ ਦੀਆਂ ਕੰਧਾਂ ਕਿਤੇ ਬਟਾਲੇ ਦੀਆਂ ਕੰਧਾਂ ਕਿਤੇ ਨਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਸੇਵਾ ਦੇ ਰੂਪ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਾਥ ਖੋ ਲਈਆਂ ਗਈਆਂ ਅੱਜ ਵੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਸ ਚੀਜ਼ ਨੂੰ ਸੰਭਾਲਣ ਤੋਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਵਾਂਝੇ ਹੋ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਵਿਰਸੇ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਹਮਲੇ ਹੋ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਗੰਦਾ ਕਲਚਰ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਂ ਤੇ ਥੋਪਿਆ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਨੱਚ ਨੱਚ ਟੱਪ ਟੱਪ ਕੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਹੀ ਨੌਜਵਾਨ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਮਾਰ ਦਿੰਨੇ ਆ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਤਲ ਕਰ ਦਿੰਨੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਬਜ਼ੇ ਕਰ ਲੈਨੇ ਆ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹ ਕਰ ਦਿੰਨੇ ਆ ਧੀਆਂ ਭੈਣਾਂ ਦੀ ਨਰਾਦਰੀ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਲਾ ਸੰਗੀਤ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਂ ਤੇ ਥੋਪਿਆ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਜਿਹਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਚੱਕ ਕੇ ਵਿਦੇਸ਼ੀ ਹਕਮਾਂ ਦੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਰੱਖ ਦੇਣਗੇ ਆ ਦੇਖੋ ਇਹ ਲੋਕ ਤਾਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਆਪ ਨੱਚ ਨੱਚ ਕੇ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹੋ ਜਿਹੇ ਆ ਨਹੀਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹੋ ਜਿਹੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਵਿਰਸੇ ਵਿਰਾਸਤ ਨੂੰ ਸੰਭਾਲੀਏ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਨੂੰ ਮੇਰੀ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਅੱਗੇ ਨਿਮਰਤਾ ਸਹਿਤ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਹੈ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇੰਨਾ ਯੋਗਦਾਨ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਵੀ ਪਾ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਮੈਂ ਉਲਾਂਭਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਦਿੰਦਾ ਪਰ ਦੋ ਤਿੰਨ ਪੱਖ ਨੇ ਵਿਦਿਆ ਦਾ ਪੱਖ ਹੈ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਉਹ ਬਹੁਤ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਅੱਜ ਸੰਸਾਰ ਨੂੰ ਸਕਿਲਡ ਵਰਕਰ ਦੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਲੋੜ ਹੈ ਜੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਬੱਚੇ ਬੱਚੀਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਉੱਚ ਕੋਟੀ ਦੀ ਵਿਦਿਆ ਦੇ ਪਾਉਣੇ ਆ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਉਹ ਨਸ਼ਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਦਲਦਲ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਅੰਧ ਵਿਸ਼ਵਾਸ ਕਰਮ ਕਾਂਡ ਲੱਚਰਤਾ ਦੀ ਦਲਦਲ ਚੋਂ ਨਿਕਲ ਕੇ ਇੱਕ ਸਚਿਆਰ ਮਨੁੱਖ ਬਣ ਗਏ ਉੱਥੇ ਪੂਰੀ ਮਨੁੱਖਤਾ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਜੋ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਿਧਾਂਤ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਨਕ ਦੀ ਜੋਤ ਨੇ ਪੈਦਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਸਮੁੱਚੇ ਬ੍ਰਹਿਮੰਡ ਦੀ ਸੁੱਚੇ ਸੰਸਾਰ ਦੀ ਜੋ ਲੋੜ ਹੈ ਦੁੱਖਾਂ ਭੁੱਖਾਂ ਲੜਾਈਆਂ ਝਗੜਿਆਂ ਨਫ਼ਰਤਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਘੁਲਦੀ ਇਸ ਮਾਨਵਤਾ ਨੂੰ ਸੁਖ ਸ਼ਾਂਤੀ ਖੁਸ਼ਹਾਲੀ ਦੀ ਲੋੜ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਕੇਵਲ ਸਾਡਾ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਿਧਾਂਤ ਹੀ ਦੇ ਸਕਦਾ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਧਨ ਅੱਜ ਮਨੁੱਖ ਦੀ ਬਰਬਾਦੀ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਮਜਾਇਲਾਂ ਟੈਂਕਾਂ ਬਰੂਦ ਤੇ ਖਰਚਿਆ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਉਹ ਧਨ ਸਾਡੀ ਜੇ ਸਿਹਤ ਤੇ ਤੇ ਸਿੱਖਿਆ ਤੇ ਖਰਚਿਆ ਜਾਵੇ ਤਾਂ ਕੋਈ ਕਾਰਨ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਸਮੁੱਚਾ ਬ੍ਰਹਿਮੰਡ ਬੜੇ ਹੀ ਖੁਸ਼ਹਾਲ ਬੜੇ ਹੀ ਸ਼ਾਂਤ ਬੜੇ ਹੀ ਅਮਨ ਉਮਾਨ ਨਾਲ ਰਹਿ ਸਕਦਾ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਕਿਰਪਾ ਕਰੋ ਆਪੋ ਆਪਣੇ ਪਿੰਡਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸੰਭਾਲੋ ਆਪੋ ਜਥੇਬੰਦੀਆਂ ਬਣਾ ਕੇ ਸਿਹਤ ਤੇ ਸਿੱਖਿਆ ਤੇ ਵਿਰਸਾ ਵਿਰਾਸਤ ਨੂੰ ਸਾਂਭਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਲੱਚਰਤਾ ਦਾ ਮੁਕਾਬਲਾ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਚੰਗੀਆਂ ਫਿਲਮਾਂ ਚੰਗੇ ਯਤਨ ਹੋ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਕਿਤੇ ਨਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਜਿਸੇ ਵੀ ਰੂਪ ਚ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਪ੍ਰਮੋਟ ਕਰੋ ਆਪਣੀਆਂ ਜੜਾਂ ਉਹ ਨੇ ਆਪਣਾ ਵਿਰਾਸਤ ਉਹ ਹੈ ਜੇ ਅੱਜ ਇਹ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਕ੍ਰਿਸਚੀਅਨਟੀ ਨੂੰ ਮੰਨਣ ਵਾਲੇ ਅੱਜ ਆਪਦੇ ਰੋਮ ਨੂੰ ਸਲਾਮ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਇਸਲਾਮ ਵਾਲੇ ਮੱਕੇ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਣਾ ਕੇਂਦਰ ਮੰਨਦੇ ਨੇ ਠੀਕ ਹੈ ਹਿੰਦੂਇਜ਼ਮ ਆਪਣੇ ਧਰਮ ਸਥਾਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮੰਨਦਾ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਹਰਮੰਦਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਅਕਾਲ ਤਖਤ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨਾਲੋਂ ਟੁੱਟ ਕੇ ਜਿਉ ਨਹੀਂ ਸਕਦੇ ਸਾਡਾ ਫਰਜ਼ ਬੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਸ ਆਪਣੀ ਮੁੱਢ ਨਾਲ ਆਪਣੀਆਂ ਜੜਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਆਪਣੀ ਧਰਤੀ ਦੀ ਵਿਰਾਸਤ ਨੂੰ ਉਸ ਧਰਤੀ ਤੇ ਰਹਿਣ